Now, the next step, I'm gonna show you a couple differences between this and the front mount. Now, the major key difference between the front mount and the rear mount, beyond the looks of it, is the fact that the front mount is designed to go into the service cover that's on the transmission. Now, that's the black or the composite plastic one on the like rev match versions that are typically found on the newer 370Z, the JK transmissions. Now, what you're gonna notice with that is for one, there's two versions of that. Any of the rev match based transmissions will need the 370Z or the JK style plate. It's a slightly different bolt pattern, but more importantly, the thing that causes the most headaches during install is the underneath pocket design is completely different between the two. And that causes a lot of interference. So it's very critical you select whether or not you need it for a CD09 or a JK when you're actually checking out on the site. As far as the primary part of the shifter, like I said, it's modular. So even though it's modular, don't think that you can just grab this if you change transmission, change chassis, you need to swap it out. And even though it'll bolt up, the main difference is there's actually two ride heights that are built into this. And that's why if you notice when you get it, there's gonna be a detent on the lower side and an available hole on the higher side. Now, when I assemble these, that's where the changes happen. The ride height is set with a snapper and receiver groove that the bearing rests on, and then it's actually welded in the position so that the bearing can't spin on the shaft itself. The bearing body, the interior assembly sphere and the exterior housing are already pinned with a groove, which is what allows it to not spin on its own. This weld here is just to lock it and basically make it uh, a singular piece with the shaft. But like I said, that's the reason why there's two different setups because on the rear mount shifter, we actually have to set this up on the higher set of pins and the higher ride height because obviously it's not gonna be on the shaft selector or the shaft coupler, it's gonna be on the tail section. So that's part of the reason. But beyond that, physically, all the components, they're gonna be the same. So for instance, the only difference, I can tell you hardware wise, you're gonna have two different length of bolts for assembly on the rear mounts, because obviously when you flip it over, you'll see one set is set up high and then the other set is actually relieved deeper. So that's the reason why you have two different bolts. I do definitely recommend that once you do a function test, which basically means once you put this thing together and you get all of the gear selections working, go ahead and remove the bolts that hold the hat onto the base and just snug them up with a little bit of Loctite. A little bit goes a long way and that should secure you for further use. Now, like I said, I'm not really gonna be tightening everything up because I'm gonna take everything apart as we're going through the video. So that's your function. Like I said, the difference between the JK and the CD plate, the JKs, this plate is designed for the ones that have the rev match uh, sensor on top. You'll know you have one if it's not the black metal plate and you see a big flat sensor with a plug on it, you have a rev match transmission. So we do have available plates for either version. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, the other thing we're gonna have is there are a few transmissions that have a varying height on the selector shaft. And for those guys, I actually do make a spacer that creates a quarter inch rise from the transmission to the bottom of the front mount shifter. This is not sent out with the shifters. In four years, I've only had to send out maybe five or six of them. I do keep a few here in stock. I advise everybody to do their assembly outside on the bench, do a function test. If it comes to the point where you can't get it working, feel free to contact me after watching the original install video, as well as this video, and I'll confirm whether or not you need the spacer and I'll get one out to you for no additional charge as a convenience for you purchasing it. But like I said, I don't send them out with the shifters because it's just gonna drive the costs up. And in four years, I have had very few people actually need one. And I'll show you what one looks like. And here you can see the spacer I'm referring to. That's all it is, quarter inch thick. And it's just gonna raise everything up quarter inch so that 
what happens is typically you know when you need this because the reverse lockout spring is fully compressed meaning that once you put it on the transmission you can't push it up or down like this it's basically you go to push it and this is already bottomed out inside the shaft coupler that's installed. That's why the spacer is needed there. That tells you you have one of those oddball transmissions that the shaft height center line is actually higher than everybody else's. Like I said, this, I don't charge you. You just have to confirm. I do not send them out unless you do the necessary steps and you contact me first. So like I said, number one way to find out is just the reverse lockout spring function. If it can't do this, you probably need a spacer. If it's doing this, whatever issue you're having is not related to the spacer. Just contact me, I'll help you work through any other issues you might be having. And like I said, just watch the primary video, watch this video, and we'll get you all sorted out. Now, based on the varying heights, you're gonna want this pivot ball to sit actually like this. And I'm gonna show you once I pull these bolts. Up. Clumsy. So, as you can see, as of right now, using that many spacers on this particular transmission, we're sitting too high. That's where having the spacers for adjusting comes in. So what I would do is I would eliminate the spacers and this one will drop down into the middle. You basically want to use a spacer configuration so that when you push in reverse, it barely pops out or it won't pop out completely out of the bottom and it's still within its range of movement inside the linkage coupler. That's how we set up the spacers. A point of interest that we actually have some notations on the front mount shifter description, but a lot of guys get kind of confused. I'm gonna show you what that is, where I say shortening of the detents. Now you're gonna have one on the driver's side and the passenger side of the transmission. This one's already loose and this is what actually creates that uh, center return feel when you're going from left to right on the shifter. Now, I recommend that you shorten these because the issue that's happening is that with this new configuration, once you install the shaft coupler, it's actually bottoming out inside this hex plug. Now, when I say shorten, guys will ask me what end? Well, obviously I don't want you to touch the radius end that faces inwards. I just want you to shorten this side. And like I said, typically, if you're gonna take off if you start with about an eighth of an inch, you should finish just below probably about three sixteenths. And because normally what's happened when this is fully assembled with the new shaft coupler, this is bottomed out. And what that causes is you can't get the shifter to go left and right. That tells you if you can't get it to go left and right, you didn't do this mod. So go ahead, pull them out on both sides, start taking material off, start with an eighth of an inch and put it back together. It's as simple as that, easy peasy. And for the front mount shifter, there's a picture also on the item's description of clearance in the back side of the case. If you do that, it'll eliminate any possibility of it popping out of gear by any uh, interference and harmonics or vibration when the shifter is in gear, it's uh, that shaft coupler is actually really close to the backside, and there's about four different tailcase cat or castings. So if you do that mod, no matter which uh, tailcase you have, like this one's a CDO four, I've seen one, two, eight. Do that mod, save yourself the time and trouble before you put the case back on, modify the detents, and you'll be good to go. Beyond those two mods, those will pretty much solve 95% of your problems. The only other problem that I've seen where those don't take care of it, it's usually related to the spacer, and I already told you how to confirm that. So once you confirm that, if you need a spacer, go ahead and contact me. I'll get one out to you if you've already placed an order. Thanks for checking out this video. It's a quick overview. Remember, watch the first video, watch this video, and you should be good to go. If you still have issues after going through both videos, feel free to contact me. Uh, emails are best, you can call, but if you send me an email, I can correspond back and forth and I answer pretty much as long as I'm available. So thanks, hit the subscribe button, check out our other products, check out our other videos, and by other, I mean mine, and let me know what you want.